नमस्ते अभ्रीव Anyone has any questions? I would like to point out a comparison between a human being and a robotic computer. We all feel that we are independent with this mindset. And so we are living entity which can decide and do things and has feelings. But they, scientists have developed robotic computers which can read your facial expressions and can behave accordingly giving the messages as you wish with your mood and the stored information is adapted to the person who is using it and they can behave in a way which you would like Now, let's say instead of living with a robotic computer, you're living with a human being. Human beings are also very predictable in their own way. Their likings, their dislikings. Most of the time, those likings and dislikings stay the same throughout life. And what makes you angry, upset, Partners know a lot about their housemates. More or less we can predict how the person behaves. There is some conditioning in which we live in our mind. So we become predictable. Only Jnani is unpredictable because he or she is not taking any command from the mind, from thoughts. There still can be likes and dislikes about what the person needs to dress up or some small things. So Jnani can be very dangerous in that sense. 
because what he says or does even he doesn't know how it comes where it comes it comes from that pure intelligence he is not acting from the mind body complex he is actually free and independent from mind conditioning living in domain of mind is like playing a computer game you think you are free you get some bonuses credits discredits it's a pre-programmed game which has to end you feel that you have a choice but limited you can call it god's programming which is very sophisticated everything looks so real these people around us and situations and we are tricked all the time more you believe in mind more you are trapped mind is made up of mental impressions which give rise to our conditioning if we want to get out of this god's computer and be free only way is that the one who is part of this operating system should vanish the one who is part of this game takes all commands from this mind computer and operates in this conditioned manner has to disappear has to come back to the source source is free it is pure intelligence when this whole operating system retires in deep sleep only thing left is source consciousness but then why we are not aware of that pure consciousness in deep sleep if we are that then how come we miss it every night later on we say that i was in deep sleep but i was not aware of deep sleep during deep sleep i am aware of all this happening in waking state people things and then i am also aware when the dream is going on at night i am aware when the mind is aware isn't it and when the mind is not aware then i am not aware yogis who go into samadhi state which is not samadhi with the waking state samadhi in which they have no clue about whatever is happening they can stay in that trance state for years and years
but then that is also not liberation because when that samadhi is finished mind takes over again so the situation is when the mind is there we are awake we know when the mind is not there whether we are in deep samadhi or we are in deep sleep we disappear we are not aware so we come to this conclusion to be aware first we have to be aware during this process of mind when we are awakened not in deep sleep during bhagwan time there were very advanced seekers who used to come and in his presence they used to go into samadhi with eyes closed and going into their deep recesses beyond mind transcending mind but as soon as they open the mind acts and they are still in trap so bhagwan used to say don't close your eyes he used to say deliberately because in in closing eyes either you go into that samadhi through which you again come back to mind or you go into sleep he emphasized on sahaj samadhi samadhi in which you are awake you are outside this mind even when the mind is ticking when it is there if you use your vivek discrimination with discrimination you will understand that you are always there even when the mind is there we have to start here only when the mind is there mind has superimposed on us all this world and people thoughts in this case thing which can work is witnessing all these things happening at mind level and not getting involved when you enter into a complex situation whatever mystery it is and you have to solve it you just sit on the problem first you see what is happening who are the people involved who is the culprit where to start first you need to understand the whole situation when we sit on the situation we realize everything is coming through me when the mind acts the whole world comes out when the mind is dormant then everything is disappears apart from mind there is no world now the one who is part of the mind acting through mind is the doer who has taken role that i am this body using this mind working in that conditioned atmosphere like a slave of the mind forever and from this slavery we get rest every night in deep sleep not in the whole sleep in sleep lot of time spent in dreaming this gross body is on rest but the subtle body 
is still working out things. Whether it is some type of catharsis happening with subconscious thoughts or pent up desires, but still it is active. Be the witness to all this happening. Come out of this conditioning by witnessing this whole process. Focus on Atma, awareness, on truth. And give up your attachment from mind, maya, illusion, unreality. Worldly people think this body is real. And Robert is unreal. But for a jnani, this is also a Robert working on the conditioned mind, changing, transient. Realities which stays the same, unchanging, never born, never dies, free from all afflictions and attributes. People talk about world war. Even if the next world war happens, the whole world gets destroyed even by natural disaster. That awareness, nothing can touch. It is outside all this screen of manifestation. All this manifestation is happening at mind level. Whether it's individual mind or cosmic mind. Go beyond mind. You stay as uninvolved witness to all what is happening. We are pure witness. We are only a witness. Understand some mysterious power allows things to happen through the body. Learning, action, we are only witnessing. Make this as your firm conviction. Move from doership, from not doing anything. Body does what you don't do. You are a witness. Awareness is only a witness.
Source is not doing anything. Source has given its energy to everything and everything is working according to their own intelligence created in them. Use power of discrimination to always attend to witnessing. Witnessing happens from the source. Not that it wants to witness. It is actually not doing anything. So when not doing is happening in consciousness, what is left is only witnessing. It's not a paranoid witnessing that I have to witness this and then this. When we are uninvolved, when we are not a doer, you take the back seat, you just relax in your heart. You move from your thoughts, your mind, your doership. When you stay here, you realize that you were never a doer, even when you thought that you were a doer. There is very subtle understanding of this whole thing, how it works. Because we think we are doer, we take decisions from our thoughts and emotions. We feel responsibility of everything. Good conduct and bad conduct. Ego which has I am the body idea when follows through thoughts and thinks I am doing thing as I wish. Body has to bear the consequences, good or bad. Then the one who has I am the body idea suffers or takes credit of good things. In this system, the first and only mistake is, I am the body idea. So work only on that, not on situation and things. Once you know that you are not the doer, you have sorted out the whole problem. Scientists are busy in finding how this word has come into existence. 
seat of consciousness and they are all looking outside doing experiments in lab you have to make your mind as the experiment go beyond it then you will know the truth in bhagavad gita they make it very clear krishna has made very clear that this is the field mind body in which we have to work and be the knower of truth in that field not outside not in a lab how can you know functioning of the mind working at mind level you have to raise your level higher up when we stop functioning at the mind level we go beyond sansar in this world when thoughts still arrive at your door don't entertain them let them come tell them there is no one living in this house anymore all this post coming in form of thoughts need to be returned or even if it is left there you are not going to open it let it be there you surrender this post you give up try to give up at least in this life at this moment the biggest irony is people who are most worried anxious who are unhappy who know that this world is miserable they don't give up they still hold on everything very tightly and sadhus and saints who have all the bliss who were never involved who live on begging they have given up long time ago they are always in their bliss bliss is perennial it just flows it is our choice bliss or mind you go with mind you lose bliss you stay in bliss you lose your mind not in that usual sense of losing mind but giving up all operations at mind level people talk about free will slavery of mind is not free will
and in the domain of mind everything is predestined because it is in the domain of all conditioning of mind the ego can say that i think and i act i have freedom that's completely untrue because we have no freedom from the type of thoughts we get that is the real bondage don't give opportunity for your mind to listen to this talk as a talk this is for your own remembrance of what you are and staying there no need to gather knowledge at mind level no need to create any new concepts be alert be awakened that all what we see is superimposition on us including this body we are not this body we are not this mind we are pure awareness which is also in this body and around and everything so let's say this awareness goes out of this body does it dies no it is everywhere in everyone if we identify ourselves with the source pure awareness then we live eternally it is in everyone and around everyone even if everyone dies we stay awareness cannot go anywhere like air in the room you take off the walls air is still there whatever the external situation is keep focus on your brahman atman awareness on reality
actions of the body keep them as disinterested actions. I have no repulsion for it, but not even interested in it. Just happening. Then there is detachment from the body, from its ownership. Living in this body with attachment to the body creates further bondages. One day body will die. If that leads to freedom, then there is no problem. You live once, you enjoy or whatever you do. At the end, you get enlightened, you are free forever. So good. I wish it was like that. But this gross body goes away. Subtle body remembers all mental impressions. And then it continues. Just like at night we sleep, the subtle body takes over shows us a new word. So sleeping doesn't take away that mental impressions. When this software of the body is disrupted, let's say someone has dementia, Alzheimer's, they can't remember things. But the mental impressions at that subtle body level are still there. Though this operating system is not able to deliver things. We can't think properly and act and remember things. Only solution to this problem is getting out of this software which we call a human mind-body complex. While living in it, while awake, making this deliberate attempt with our yearning longing to know what is before it, to transcend it. Our intention helps in it. And no more interest in the mind game, which we call dispassion or vairagya. Only interest to know the truth then using the power of discrimination, what is real, what is unreal. Paying attention to real, discarding unreal. Mind acts in so many ways. To make it peaceful so you can be out of it. Santosha is very, very important. Contentment. Be contented with whatever it is. No more daydreaming. 
to create more mental impressions. Be contented with whatever it is. Staying in tranquility of mind. The tranquility in Sanskrit is known as Shama. This, from this Sham comes Shanti, peace. When the mind is tranquil, we attain peace. In Hindi, there is a word similar to it. Shama means forgiveness. You forgive. The best forgiveness is when you are not a doer, no ego. Forgiveness makes us feel that I am there and I forgive others. If there is no I, there is no you, then who will forgive whom? Attain that tranquility. Have contentment. Use your discrimination and stay with real as awareness. Our dispassion for all what is happening around and our love for this reality will help us to establish in it firmly, naturally, and eternally. Abide in your pure stillness. We are this stillness. There is never ever movement in this stillness. There is no mind, no activity. Here we are in our purest form. Devotee of Ramna will become Ramna. That is for sure. And if that is not happening, there is some problem in your practice. That means we are not real devotees. We have not given up ego. We have not surrendered completely. We have not understood the teaching. Perhaps we are more interested in things around us. We have not lost interest. We have not lost hope that mind will give me more new things. We still are slave of mind. Or perhaps we love it. If you love it, there is nothing wrong about it. But then we cannot complain that I am not free, that I don't know reality.
We are pure awareness. Unmoving awareness. Body moves, body goes. Awareness is everywhere. Never give up your bliss, whatever comes and goes. Be independent of all situations. Be free always. This teaching is not to tell anyone else, but having a firm conviction that I am free, I am bliss, I am only a witness, I am awareness. All around us is projection of mind, including this body. I am completely uninvolved, always. I have no say in it. When Bhagwan was living in ashram, he didn't say much about functioning of the ashram. Very, very rarely, he used to say something very politely. Sometimes standing outside the office as if he is a visitor. And when someone notices, he will say very politely about a thing. If you see things he gave up, he gave up because there was some incidents in which there was some confrontation and he gave up. I remember an incident about coffee being served after meal and it was not enough coffee for everyone. So the people who were sitting inside 
closer to Bhagwan was offered to them, and to rest they offered just water. The day he realized that this was happening, he stopped having coffee. He never had it after a meal. He used to go to kitchen early morning to help in food preparation. But then those chefs might have felt, some of them probably, that they can make things more tastier or in a different way. Because Bhagwan wanted to use everything in preparation, not wasting anything. Whatever happened, he stopped going there and never went. Same thing I heard about Pradakshina, Girivalam going around the mountain. I think that was in his early 50s. It's not that being things he gets annoyed and stop doing it. Try to understand this. Not for it, not against it. If you are not needed there, you can just move out. When the others are doing it, let them do. Each and every action in Bhagwan's life is a teaching for us. Not to mimic, behave same as in that situation, but behaving from that pure intelligence, which we call as Parabrahman, establishing ourselves there. Focus on solution then why that problem has come to us. Some people keep asking how I got into this trap. Important thing is to how to get out of this trap. The best tool is our attention. Keep attention on awareness. And try to understand who will keep attention on awareness. Only awareness can stay as awareness. Just be. If we don't add anything else in this attention, we attain to supreme bliss. Without mind, we attain the tranquility, shama. Without thoughts, we are contented, santosha. These qualities which are being said in Vedanta are actually qualities of self. So if we practice those qualities, we attain self only.
mind is so restless. We work like slaves of the mind. We cannot even stay still. The body keeps moving, doing one act, the other act, multitasking. Ego is always on the go. We can use this knowledge, satsang, to acquire a knowledge to the mind, or we can use it to be free from the mind. To be free, contemplate in your heart. Be there always. Someone has asked this question, what is Japa? Japa is one of the techniques to calm your mind. Japa means repetition of a sacred name. Again and again and again. Loudly or in your mind. You can know self by these aids or directly jump with your understanding into self. Bhagwan's path is vichar marga. The first path is only silence and understanding and be. If not, then vichar marga, self inquiry. by using power of discrimination, questioning this I all the time. Thank you everyone, thank you. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Um,